Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Okami HD episode 35. I'm your host, Ultra Director Jester. Today we're just taking care of all the stray beads in Seon City today, or at least most of them. Hey, get up, Amy, we gotta get going. A lot to do today, so let's not waste any time. First off, let's take a quick stop by the merchants. I think we got a couple of things to sell to him, just, okay, just a crystal, you know, that's still good. What else can we get here? Uh, I think we're pretty good on most everything right now. Maybe we get a couple more inf infinity stones. That'd be good. But there's one more merchant here. The weapons dealer. I kind of missed him the first time around because he's just kind of tucked away in a corner hiding behind this... thing. I gotta say, though, he's awesome. I mean, look at that shit. He is just way too... Way too equipped with weapons. That's awesome. And now that we're his only customer, we... Well, I don't know if that makes any difference, but... The important thing here is the Trinity Mirror. I think this only becomes available after you defeat Ninetales, but... We'll, we'll definitely go ahead and pick that up. Doesn't care how much money we spend. Maybe we'll get a gold dust, too. I think I'll show that off. You can only get gold dust through doing certain side quests, and it's not really all that common, but uh, I'll show you how it works. What you do is open up your tools here, and go select your gold dust. What it does is it upgrades the abilities, the, I guess, the power of whatever weapon you want. So, uh, yeah, you can only choose one for now. I think we'll go with the exorcism beads. We'll go with our strongest rosary, that's always the best bet. If you have any extra gold dust, I go for the sub-weapon, and then all of a sudden you're overpowered. See, if you look at the main weapon there, there's a bit of a glow behind that. So now, my rosary is all but unstoppable. Ha 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 You also notice that I got quite a bit more demon fangs. I got 213 demon fangs, because I had to do some re-recording re after all of this, because, you know... Uh, I forgot to save after recording episode 34, so I had to do it again. It's just... Well, you don't even care. Next up, we're gonna go see our good friend Mr. Flower over here, but first I'm gonna make a daylight. I tried doing this earlier, but I didn't find all of the trees in time. But now that we've got some time to do it, let's go ahead and find these remaining four trees. So we can get Seon City back to full bloom. Oh, there's one tricky one right behind here. I didn't even think to look behind his house. You know what? I bet you didn't even think to look inside his house either. Because it turns out there's a tree right here, too. And that's not all that's in here. If you go through in this closet, you can see a little bit of where a chest is sticking out. We'll go ahead and dig that up. And that gets us stray bead 47. Getting a lot of stray beads today. Alright, let's find those other trees. The thing about these trees is that some of them you just can't... Well, this one you can. Some of them, you just, you know, can't bloom because they have all that marking on them, all that evil auras, whatnot. So now we gotta find that one tree that we can bloom that isn't, you know, uh, marred by evil spirits. And I happen to know exactly where it is. It's this one. If you look around hard enough, uh, you'll be able to find them all. They're only in the commoner section. The ones in the aristocratic section don't count. So now we've got that, let's head back to the old man. Probably should have taken care of that first. Oh well. Be prepared to run. There's no pushover. Another crazy old man, another crazy old dance to go along with. Hey, 
I like the Gurus Shuffle. It's actually my favorite dance out of all the crazy old man dances. But man, he runs fast. He's just gonna run to uh, these curse trees. And that weird dance makes you able to bloom these trees. And then you can go from there. But he runs fast. Oh god. Where is he going? Try not to lose him. I think you can lose him, but don't worry, we're not going to. He just runs around in random areas, just in a random path. I mean, he's not high attack fast, but he's still pretty fast. I don't know, that song is kind of... That song's kind of catchy. Move faster, old man, come on! You can only do it when he finishes the song right. Here. Alright, a couple more to go. Just gonna make a jump over there. So, Kai! Haha! -ha. There's the next one. Where are you going? You're coming over here, I know. Ha! I was right. You're predictable, old man. I've also done this like four times. In the past week. Alright. So I can tell you that he doesn't run in a random pattern. He run always runs in the same path all the time. It's never different. Now he's gonna run back to his house. Which is just over here. And then up over here. And he's gonna take care of this one on top of his house. Come on over. Play that song. And there you go. Now Seon City looks wonderful. Kind of stinks that the individual trees that we bloomed didn't get us individual praise, but uh... Uh, don't forget to get the one on top of his head. I forgot to mention that. I got it uh, last time I was here, but uh, you need to bloom the one on top of his head. That's kind of neat. Alright. Next, we're going to get to what I believe is the most difficult stray bead to get in the entire game. We're going to talk to this girl over here. You're, you're drawing a butt. Yes, yes we have. Oh, you're drawing the... He he no no mo he shi. Oh, wait. It's a good thing we got the charcoal from the merchant when we first came here. That's why you always buy the quest items early. So that way, when you get to a quest, it's already there to start. I guess. I don't know. Right, so now the idea is we talk to her again. And she'll think of a picture. We have to draw that picture somewhere else in the city. And to do that, we go around this avenue, turn this corner. Jump over this dude. And over this bridge. Into the textile mill, or the tailor shop. I'm not really sure what to call this place. 
And there's a chest right here for us. Almost in plain sight. Sorry you couldn't hide your crystal from me. My bad. And the infamous Mr. Sheik. Mr. Sheik is a kimono designer. Not much is obvious, but there's no real interesting trivia on him. He's just a quirky guy. We'll call it a kimono shop. Yeah, this seems good. Alright. So, talk to him again. The idea is, we draw the design that the little girl had for us. So it was a heart, we have to draw it perfectly and exactly. We do the heart as we start from the bottom tip and just kind of go around like that, and then like that. That should do it. It's very complicated and it's very difficult to do. At least it's going to get more complicated and more difficult to do. So then, after that, we gotta run all the way back to the girl on the other side of the city, pretty much. Well, other side of town, at least. We'll talk to her, and we'll see if we got it right by actually speaking to her. And if she says this, it means you got it. If she just repeats her uh, dialogue tree, then that means you didn't get it. Since we draw the heart correctly, it rec the game recognizes it as the love pattern. And a ton of praise. And you have to do this five times. So here we go, round two. Now she's thinking of a star. Sounds easy enough. Alright, now we run back to the kimono shop. All right, here we go. Draw on the star. All right, so here we go. Star shouldn't be too hard. Just start here in the corner, and then up, down, left, right, and then down again. Up. Oh, that probably wasn't very good. Uh, I can do better than that. So if you messed up, you want know, to try again, you can talk to him again. And you just do that. So try again. So up, and then down, and then up, alright. Up. Going a bit too high on that top there. Hold on. There, that looks pretty good. See what the game thinks of my star. It looks kind of satanic a little bit, but hey. Some characters are easier to draw than the others. Which is what makes this beat so very, very infamous for being difficult. Alright, see if we got it. Yeah, we got it. So like I said, the difficulty just goes all the way around, because round three just baffles me all the time. Yeah, we can skip that. I was just thinking of a V. Or a, a bird or something. Uh, whatever, back to the kimono shop. Alright, I got the most incredible design for you today, buddy. No, no, get this. It's just down and then up. Ha ha! A V.
He's supposed to say something if you got it right or not, but for some reason in the PS3 version, and only the PS3 version, he doesn't. I'll probably talk about this a little, a little bit later. But right now we're gonna go see if our V was acceptable. Back to the little girl. Alright, what do you think? Nope. He didn't get it. Wow, I can't believe I failed that. I think it's because I got the stroke wrong on the uptake. We'll try again. Yo, man, that V was all last week. This is the real V, man. I sort of really don't like this girl. I've been getting a little bit of contempt for her lately. Because sometimes you won't accept my designs when they're obviously perfect. What's wrong with my V, goddamn you? You just pick one that you have to glitch upon? Ugh. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what you do. When you come to this bead, you're just gonna get frustrated and angry, and it's probably gonna take you days to do it. Like, this is probably day two of me trying to get this fucking bead. Something's just gonna give you a problem somewhere. And I can't believe it's at the easiest shape. I was literally recording for like a goddamn hour yesterday trying to get this fucking thing, but no, I don't believe that we even have to deal with this kind of crap. But anyway, let's see if she likes our V. Yeah, alright, we got it. What? 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 So that was a beautiful Joe reference, if you didn't catch that. Round four! This one seems almost impossible. A clover? Are you kidding me? Not as difficult as you may think, actually. Up until now, you've been thinking you have to do this all in one stroke, but you don't have to. Like I said, it seems impossible, but it's very, very simple when you actually get down to it. Don't think of it as one stroke, think of it as four circles. As long as they interconnect somehow, I think you'll be alright. Let's see here, and there, and... Whoop! Uh-oh. It's a six at the end. Let me try that. I can do better. I really hate this side quest. There. That should be alright. I think the game is more lenient on circles than they are straight lines and angles. Alright. How'd we do? Nope! Alright, let's try again. Circle one. Circle two. Circle three, circle four. Ooh. I've drawn worse and the game's accepted it. I don't even think one of my circles was closed in the last time I had to do this. If only there was a faster way to check and see if we did it. But nope, this is the price we pay for 1080p. How'd we do? Alright, we got it. Yeah, it's nice, I suppose. No kidding. Alright. Round five. The kanji for heaven. Ten. It's probably the most difficult one to do because it's the most finicky. Actually, I don't even know if it's finicky. I don't know if... This is just such an inconsistent quest here. I think it just got glitched in the conversion. The idea is two straight lines, like that, and then you can curve it like that, and then just like that. I had the, I've had the most difficult time with this goddamn character. If she, if she accepts this, I'm gonna be pissed. I didn't think so. And I swear, I had to spend over an hour. Just finicking around, 
Tr you know what, let me just tell you about it. I mentioned before how this particular B was glitched in the transition to HD. I'm pretty sure that it is because it's a problem that only exists in the PS3 version. This quest is finicky enough, but if your kimono drawing is successful, Mr. Shiki is supposed to make a comment about how it can make something happen. Problem is, this only occurs in the PS2 and Wii versions. For some reason, as you've seen, Mr. Sheik makes no such comment when my drawings are accepted. I spent almost an hour and a half trying to draw this last kanji and trying to get it to work. I know how to draw the kanji. It's easy. Two vertical lines, a line down the center that curves left, and a diagonal line from the center and aiming downward. But A, I don't know exactly how precise the game expects me to be in my drawing, and B, I'm using a DualShock instead of a Move Controller or a Wiimote, so my strokes are usually imprecise half the time. I have no real strategy. It's just gonna feel random and arbitrary each time. All I can offer is just keeping at it and trying again if you don't get it, but before recording I just bullshitted around and in five minutes the game seemed to randomly accept my drawing when out of the 20 or so tries, at least eight of them were near goddamn perfect. With a little fanfare she finally gives you stray bead number 48. Clearly worth all that effort. This is one of two stray beads I dread most. So with that, I'm just gonna load that file and resume the let's play as normal. More trouble than it was worth. But hey. At least we got the hardest bead in the game out of the way. Then we can leave the commoner section and head on over to the aristocratic section. There is one bead hiding in this area, but we're gonna get that later. A little bit later. I want to get something from the Emperor first. And there's a few more beads to take care of in the aristocratic section anyway. These people will just be waiting in line for a priestess who is never coming back. Yep, you are. Each and every one of you. Really, just, it's just empty. Nobody's here anymore. It's kind of weird. Alright. Oh, it's getting dark. I'm also gonna be blooming as many trees as I can because the aristocratic section needs to look pretty too as I walk around their Zen garden. This is very disrespectful. But hey, she's a wolf, what are you gonna do? Alright, let's see. There's one hiding around here somewhere. Ah, here we go, right here. Between these th these three bushes... There's a chest! And there's Straybead 51. Alright, now let's exchange some demon fangs. What do you say? After we bloom these two trees here. Man, I should've bloomed these when I had the chance. I like how I can uh, make it into the Emperor's Palace, no problem, but to get into the Dead Queen's Palace, I still have to use Veil of Mist on those guards. Kinda strange. We're getting two very important treasures here. Ooh, this one back here first. A rooster statue. I must have missed this the first time I was here. Alright, what's up, Emperor Man? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I have enough demon fangs, I have enough to buy your entire stock. Well, not your entire stock, but... The important things we're getting? The fog pot. It's a warp between origin mirrors. Certain origin mirrors, though. It turns out this is a special power from Kasugami. It's only origin mirrors that have an X on them. I'll be demonstrating that next episode. You just call the Emperor a royal oaf? 
This is the th this is just the technique scroll. So we needed to get this treasure if you wanted to get the platinum trophy. We're not done yet. We actually are getting this water tablet. And that's gonna be fun to show off too. Anything else we need here? Uh, huh. Oh, we can get it. Let's see. The, the big thing I want to get next is the golden ink pot. But I don't have- I don't see any reason why we can't get the wooden mat right now. So we'll go ahead and equip what we got. We don't have the fire tablet, but we'll take the water tablet, put that there. And the wooden mat, which will heal our wounds when we sleep. There's a little something to hold a placeholder until we get that golden ink pot. So now we're fully equipped. We got our, our strongest weapon that we can get right now. I think we are ready for something, I guess. I don't know what we're ready for, but... Now we're gonna go to Gen's Tower. Where is that? Well, let's look at our map. You see where those two catcall towers are right there on the map? That's where we're heading next. <laughs> After I bloom this thing. It's the tower that has the clock on it. I mean, the tower that has the clock on it. Oh man. These people do not take good care of the trees. And I have the fence here, and there is our cat call tower. Kind of strange to get him zoomed out so you can see, but shouldn't have too much problem with this power. Up we go. All right, next. Let's. This one's really tricky. There we go. You can only have one cat call tower active, I may add. You can't see it, but uh, the bottom one's been disabled. Well, not disabled, but that path is gone. We have an electric box here, but no means of electricity. Hmm. What's this guy up here up to? Gen isn't based on a fighting game character, but actually based on Hidaga Gennai. Gennai was like a Japanese Tesla in the 18th century. He was best known for his wooden electrostatic generator, the Erikiteru. He has appeared in many other fictional works since then. man. Luckily, we managed to pick it up from Ida in Shinshu Field last episode. I don't know why Ida has it. Well, I don't know, he seemed kind of rude about it, but uh, we have no choice, I guess. Pfft. 
jag off. You still seem frustrated though, what's the problem? Oh. Lightning bringer? Uh, oh, I see. We need to just uh, do one of these, one of these, one of these. Ha! I've been getting good at my brush strokes. Free electricity! Thunderbolt. A thunderstorm. Thunderbolt. So now we have working electricity in God, this is this is like probably seven hundred AD or something. Huh. So I'm trying not to think too hard about the history here. That's a lot of praise. Here's a text scroll for said technique. Now we don't have any electricity to draw on from here, but luckily we can just go ahead and make our own. Wait, make our own? Oh, come on. Oh, it had to be. My apologies. I guess it had to be straight arrow, straight angles. Eh, whatever. That was straight beat 56 anyway. That went to climactic. Let's see how far we can get up here. Oh, I get it. It's like a clock, so you can see the time it takes for when it becomes dark. I wonder if I can fuck with it. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. <laughs> oh, one more time. Come on. <laughs> I'm putting your machine through the ring again. Okay, well, anyway. Next, we're going back to the bridge. We got one more straight beat to get this episode. Very big wide open area if you can tell by looking at the map. There's a stray bead somewhere in here. The idea is you're going to jump left off the bridge and the water tablet in action. We don't even need lily pads anymore. We can just run on the water free as we can be. We don't need orca or anything. We'd have to worry about drowning and this works for any and all water surfaces. Not sure if it works for lava though. It would be kind of cool if it did though. So with that, we can just uh, go around here and check out and see what, what, what uh, chests they have for us. Because there's quite a few chests hidden here. The one that I care about the most is this one, which is, you can see coming up here, any minute now. And just in 3, 2, 1, here it is, it's Straybeat53. There's a few more around here. But man, it's, it's powered great. Alrighty now. Mm. 
We've got one episode left this season. There's still several more strabies to pick up now, which we can get because we have the electricity and the and the uh, water tablet and all that. And there's a few more things we need to take care of. But uh, that's all for this episode of Let's Play Okami HD. We will see you next time.